Okay, I'll sort of take that as a, as a two-part-ish question. How do you deal with family members if they're diagnosed with something serious? And how do you uh, respond uh, to sort of difficult situations and still be practical? Um, uh, from, of course, a miracles perspective. Um, you know, if, you know my, my response to any situation is a reflection of how much spiritual work I've done to date. <coughs> so depending on how much work I've done on letting go of my ego, how much forgiveness work, you know, praying for a miracle to see it differently, or the observer, or feeling feelings, uh, I am already at a different level of consciousness to when I first started. Um, so my response, depending on the level of ego dominance or ego inflation, will always be, you know, uh, related to the amount of spiritual work I've done to date. So if suddenly a shock happens, or a trauma happens, or it's suddenly, like, your mum's dead, uh, out of nowhere has got uh, end-stage cancer, the response is a correlation of how much spiritual work that automatically arises. So uh, whether it's someone who's strongly identified and goes into trauma, or there is you know, there is a bit of identification and there is observing. It just depends how much spiritual work has been done to date uh, with that situation. Now, in terms of, however, like, uh, okay, the question of dealing with family. Well, dealing with family, I mean, doing transcendence work with family is practical uh, in the sense that uh, you do your transcendence work before you can do your transcendence work what I mean by that, the Course of Miracles, pray for a miracle to see them differently, pray to see them as meaningless. You know, they're as meaningless as the, a mug of tea. Um, uh, you know, uh, you can place them into God's infinite light and love. Uh, you can cancel your belief that they have any power over you. Uh, you're an infinite being. So you can use all the Course lessons on them. That's part, part of the transcendence work. Uh, and you can, you know, practice the observer. You know, uh, before you meet them, like, is someone with, you know, what, who am I? And what's witnessing the I that I believe I am? So you can do that. You can also do that during, you know, you can talk to your, you can talk to a family member who's in distress and you speak to them, but then, you know, while they're talking back or while there's no talking, you can practice, you know, pray for a miracle to see them differently, place them to God's infinite light and love practice being the observer of the whole situation and not getting hooked in. So that can happen even during it, during them. And it doesn't negate you being able to speak to them or talk to them, you know, sit with feelings and afterwards do the work to clear. Um, you know, especially if, if, if they're in distress and the ego is heavily identified, they're extremely ill, doing lots of spiritual work beforehand, I think is a good thing because, you know, if you're in, you know, they've got a bad news and you're feeling very identified with fear and in your thoughts and the body, you see, you're almost like coming out of that reflection when you meet them because you'll be heavily identified with fear, projecting a lot of stuff and negative thoughts. So if you do a lot of, a lot of clearing work before you go in, that will tend to elevate you and it will be better for them and for you. Um, I would also say with um, doing transcendence work, you know, I, I always like, and I regularly sort of share this in the group, like doing transcending work with your relatives or anyone is probably, I think, one of the biggest gifts you can do them for them. You know, depending on how much forgiveness work and how much work you do on yourself to release their power over you and their effect on you, I think it's one of the, and I, I'll just say, you know, uh, you don't have to transcend someone, you can just do a bit of work on them and that will benefit them. Well, just remember, uh, I always love to talk about do uh, Dr. Hugh Len. Does it, most people know about Dr. Hugh Len? I've heard of him. So, uh, Pana So, this was a guy, this was a guy, we, we, we are on, um, uh, yeah, so this was a guy who, uh, I would say he's a mystic, so he doesn't really want to go and meet you necessarily but he'll forgive everything, all the perceptions he has of guilt in you and any data he's holding about what is projected in this situation from the collective. And clear, I, that's my take on it, he clears it until, until there's nothing left in his mind. So he got all the files of the prisoners, of these violent prisoners, 
and he just did this inner spiritual work and everyone got well in that prison and they all left and they closed the prison down and he didn't meet them I don't think he went and sort of talked to them and gave them therapy he just got the files okay this is an axe murderer let me just clear that data you know if he's sinful let me just clear that data and clear what what is coming up for me until it was 100 percent gone i.e fully transcended for me when something is transcended when you're in the present moment you, that data is gone you know there's, a, there's only now so if i'm having a memory of something over and over again um, then i haven't really transcended that data it still has some pull you know still there's an emotional identification or or the images have a special projection on them otherwise you know like if someone puts a mug of tea in me I'm not going to obsess about that mug of tea for the rest of my life because it's a meaningless object there's no, nothing attached to it, it it's, it's, uh, it's a neutral thing so the ego can't uh, attach to it so when I did the transcending work with my mother you know, uh, it was a very, very difficult relationship. It became a, a really amazing, loving relationship. You know, she died. I was at her side telling her I loved her. She told me she loved me. And it wasn't like that before I did spiritual work, I can tell you. Uh, so 